Into the Fold is a podcast on mental health issues produced by the Hogg Foundation for Mental Health. I'm your host, Ike Evans. At the same time, I think there is a common thread throughout that whole take uh, in that what we are truly trying to do is to do away with stereotypes that limit individuals, whether minority, majority, women, men, or others, in the sense of, of coming to the point where we as a nation say that individuals should be judged and their opportunity should be there according to their individual merits and accomplishments. And that is more than anything else what we are working toward. We're finding Miss Reddington, uh, could you give us a minute and a half of guidelines about what are the next steps that each of us may take in our own personal world to help solve some of these women's issues we've been discussing? I think it's a real feeling of responsibility that those of us who have been fortunate enough, as I think everyone has been, to, to reach a new level of development and, and personal um, uh, satisfaction have the real responsibility in turn to help pull those behind us up and then to move on and pull them up again. There's two ways to think about women and their resilience and their perhaps desire to make a change in society for their life's work. And usually we think about that in terms of individual therapy. So people getting individual counseling to face, say, depression. And when I personally think about depression, I think about feeling stuck, feeling like you have no power to do anything to change your life or what you're seeing in society. Right now there's a lot of depression um, related to the COVID pandemic and a lot of people have been ex ex uh, experiencing pretty serious mental health issues of anxiety and depression. I see that with my students. But I think that what we saw then and I also see now is that is that these young women were facing some real difficulties, um, even sexual violence per perhaps, and that certainly is a trigger for depression and anxiety. But when they, when they came together as a group and weren't dealing with something alone and informing organizations actually did make a difference. There's a lot that really did change in the 1960s. The Austin Women Activists Oral History Project that now includes 41 interviews, mostly of women who were activists at UT and in Austin in the 1960s and 70s. These interviews were conducted by students who were certainly as wowed as I was in what they found. What I learned was that Roe v. Wade didn't just come out of the head of Sarah Weddington um, or any other attorney, but that it came out of student activism here literally at the University of Texas. 